Hi, this is QA Shahin, and in this video, we're going to start talking about containers for Docker. In particular, we are going to start talking about using multiple containers. We're going to see the importance of understanding how multiple containers work. And once we have an understanding, we'll see how they actually work hand in hand. So let's begin. So the agenda of this video is very simple. We're just simply going to try and look at multiple containers. Again, really quickly, if you wish to follow the blog post, then please just click on the link here. Naturally, this is a video. So alternatively, you could go ahead and just click on the blog link in the description below. All this means is you have the option of reading the blog post instead of watching the video if it's more convenient. And alternatively, if you go to my blog site and subscribe, then you'll be notified of my blog post a lot earlier than my videos because my blog posts come out earlier. So multiple containers. So what is this concept of multiple containers? For the purpose of this video, we are going to pull two different containers. So in the previous video, we pulled a Ubuntu container and what we did was we actually logged into the Ubuntu machine and just played around very quickly just to confirm that we were in fact inside the Ubuntu machine. In this video, we're actually going to pull two different containers. We're going to pull a MySQL container, which is going to act as a backend database. And we're going to pull a WordPress container, which is going to act as a front end blog setup site almost. We're going to see how you would pull the two different containers. And we're also going to try and set a couple of options for each of these containers so that they know that they are supposed to talk to each other. And then we're going to actually try and use them on the browser. So in other words, once we actually pull it and set this up, we're actually going to try and access the WordPress site. So to do this, we're going to try to follow these commands below. And I'm going to explain what each of these are as we go through them. Right, so first of all, let's just make sure we don't actually have any images. And we don't. And let's just make sure that we're not running any current containers. And we're not. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is pull the MySQL and WordPress images. To do this, all I do is docker pull MySQL. Now, this could take a second because it needs to download it since we don't really have the images yet. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull the WordPress image. Okay, so now let's quickly list our images and we can see we have both MySQL and WordPress images. Now, so what do we actually do? Now, to try and get each of these to talk to each other, we need to run each of the images. So naturally, we'd want to run the database image first and set that up. So we already know how to run an image. We simply say docker run and then the name of an image. But in this case, we want to be able to actually give a little bit more information to a given image that we run as a container. So in this case, the first thing I want to do is actually give a name to the SQL image. So in this case, I'm going to say QAS, short for QA Shahin, and then I am just going to say SQL. Now, because this is WordPress, we also need to provide an environment variable to the container that is going to run the MySQL image. To provide an environment variable, we say minus E, we then supply the name of that environment variable, which in this case is MySQL 
underscore root underscore password all in capital letters followed by the value of that password and I'm just going to say password and finally we want to run this as a Damien thread and the way to do that is we just say minus D and in this case I say that I want it to be a MySQL and we also need to provide a tag which is basically the version of SQL you want and in this case I want the latest version so let's go through this one more time all we're taking is docker run and then provide a name so for this image I want to call it QAS-SQL I then want to set a value for this particular environment variable which I define with minus E and then the name of the daemon thread for that and that's it this is now up and running now I want to do something similar for WordPress so again I say docker run I want to provide a name so in this case I'm going to say QAS dash WordPress now this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting when we have multiple containers where we want a container to talk to another container you somehow need to link both the containers together so how do you link both the containers together well we can use the link parameter when you actually run a WordPress container you can actually provide a value for a link argument what the link does is for WordPress is that it expects you to give it the name of an instance or a container of a MySQL server and it just so happens that we just happen to have one running so here I can say that this is the name of my SQL server and it is of type my SQL so this is now a way of me saying link this to an existing container of type my SQL and this is the name of that SQL server so that's great this actually gives us a way of linking one container to another we also can provide more options so for instance we can say the port so let's just say I wanted to access my WordPress site. I can actually provide a port. So in this case, it's going to be 8080 via 80. And finally, similar to SQL, where we provide a daemon, we can say the same thing. And in this case, we just want to call it WordPress. And that's it. So let's hit enter and see what happens. So this looks like this is actually now running both the SQL and the WordPress and we can confirm this by looking at docker ps minus a so you can now see that they have actually been running for some time now so the SQL server has been running for about two minutes and the WordPress about 13 14 seconds which also lists the ports now finally let's actually try to access the WordPress now before we do that let me just get the local IP of this particular machine so if I say docker machine and then IP this thing gives me the IP of this machine now there's a reason why I've done this because I have noticed that local host sometimes on some machine doesn't work it works either way this is a surefire way of finding out or rather trying to get access to that WordPress anyway let's now try and access our WordPress instance so what I'm going to do is punch in that IP which was 192.168.99.100 oops and then the port which is 8080 and hit enter and this has now navigated to instance of WordPress that is actually running as part of my docker instance so I can now fully interact with this I can just hit continue I can provide all the relevant information and if I go through this what I will end up having is actually an instance of WordPress running in my 
Docker instance. So what have we done in this video? So in this video, we actually pulled two images. The first was my SQL, which we were going to act as a backend database. And we pulled an image of WordPress, which was going to act as our front end WordPress provider, including installation. And the idea was we actually got one container linked to another container. Once we did that, we were also able to access the WordPress container via our web browser. So this is evidence of having containers talking to each other and actually then also being able to do something with them. So that's it for this video, folks. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next one.